Hi there, I'm Mrs McTaggart. Welcome to this video on scientific notation. This is part three on the series on scientific notation lessons that I've been recording. And this one is going to look at, look at putting tiny numbers into scientific notation. So before this, make sure you've seen how to do the big numbers first of all, because these are just a little bit trickier, but if you've seen how to do the big ones, then it should all make sense. Just to remind you of the general form of any number when it's written in standard form or scientific notation, remember they mean the same thing. We should have a number um, that is between 1 and 10 multiplied by 10 and then the power is however many places you're moving the decimal point. Now so far we were looking at how many places we were having to move the decimal point to the left. Today we're having to move the decimal point um to the right okay this bit in front of the number the bit in front of the times 10 again remember should always be between 1 and 0 so you can't have 0 0.37 you can't have 37.2 but you could have maybe 3.72 that would be the appropriate one to have there it has to be between 1 and 10 and the rule is generally I always teach pupils the decimal point goes after the first digit you are given, okay? And the power n is still how many places you're moving the decimal point, but it's going to be moving a different way today. So before I go any further, I'm just going to remind you of this one here. So this first number would have been written as the decimal point goes after the 3, so that would be 3.62 times 10. And then we are moving the dot from here all the way along to here which is five places, so that had the power of five. So it was 3.62 times 10 to the power of five. Now, this number looks very similar. It's got a three, a six, and a two in it. So if I'm going to write this into scientific notation, the decimal point still goes after the three. So it still becomes 3.62 times 10. And if I look at how many places my decimal point is traveling this time, it's traveling from there to there, which is a distance of again five numbers so if i put the power five in there well that looks like it's saying both those numbers are the exact same so we have to do something that shows the difference between this being a really big number like three hundred sixty-two thousand, or a really tiny number and what they do is is to put a minus in now so if it's a teeny teeny nine teeny tiny number you need to remember that it's got a negative power because effectively previously our uh, our decimal point was moving that way now our decimal point is moving that way. So because of the change in direction of the decimal point movement, the, the change in the power goes from positive to negative. And that's the easiest way to remember it. So basically for tiny numbers, the power becomes negative because the point is moving in the opposite direction. So let's look at these two examples. So 0 0.006, we still put the decimal point after the first digit. So it's going to go after the 6. So that's going to become 6 times 10. We are moving our decimal point from here to here. Now that has moved three places, so we put negative three, okay? On the second one, decimal point is going to travel to after the first digit, so that's 5.6. And we're moving it one, two, three, four, five places. So it's 5.6 times 10 to the power five. Okay, let's do another example, example three. So decimal point is going to go after the eight. So it's 8.4 times 10. And we're moving it from there to there, which is a difference of two places. So we put a negative two. The fourth example, decimal point goes after the seven. So it's 7.23. Remember, you keep all the digits there. Don't be tempted to shorten that to 7.2 unless a question mentions one decimal place in it, okay? So it's 7.23 times 10 to the power, and we have only moved it one place this time. So that would have a power negative one on it. Example five. So the decimal point is going to go between the nines. So that will be 9.9 .9 times 10. And we're moving it one, two, three, four places. So minus four. And my last example, decimal point is going to go after the two. So 2.56 times 10. And in this one, we're moving it one, two, three, four, five, six places. So minus six. 
Now, I'm wondering if you have spotted anything in these ones. There is a slight trick, and I don't always tell it to pupils until we have tried working all our way through these. Look at example five. It had a power minus four. Do you notice anything else about that minus four? Look at example six. It's got a power minus six. Do you notice anything else about that power minus six at all? Good wee hint is just a wee double check, is look at the amount of zeros at the beginning of the number. So these are called your leading zeros. Okay, if you look at the first one, we had one, two, three, four zeros, power was minus four. On this one, we had one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, power was minus six. So, in tiny, tiny numbers, the power you have should also match the number of zeros, okay? So, the power matches the leading zeros, they're called. So, the zeros at the beginning are called the leading zeros. So, that's just a wee kind of check and it's worth if you want to check your answers. And remember, feel free to get sit there with your pen and your pencil and do the counting like I've done, doing the bumps. So this is about I have finished all my examples. There are 10 here for you if you want to pause and try them yourselves. And when you unpause, the answers will be on the next slide. So thank you very much and hopefully you've done well with this video. Thank you.